Let's hang out. Let's hang out. And let's talk about what lessons about. Let's hang out. And let's listen to two lesbian shout. Let's hang out. Let's hang out. Hey guys, welcome to Let's Hang Out, a podcast that definitely does not have a five year plan. From the East Coast, out in Boston, I'm your co host, Ellie Brigida. And out on the West Coast, I'm your co-host, Lee Holmes Foster. And welcome to episode 16, our fourth installment of Les Centrals. Les Centrals is a recurring segment on the show where we dive into classic lesbian movies or shows. And just as a reminder, we are now writing and recording original songs for each of the Les Centrals movies that we do. So remember to stick around till the end to listen to that. And for this Les Centrals episode, we're going to be breaking down a more recent lesbian classic, Carmilla. So for anyone who's not familiar with Carmilla, it is a 2017 movie. It was written by Alejandro Alcoba and Jordan Hall and directed by Spencer Maybe and stars Natasha Negovanlis and Elise Bauman. And the great blurb that I found for this movie, which I love because it's so vague, is (laughs) Laura and Carmilla enlist help from their old friends from Silas University to uncover a supernatural threat. I mean, I guess it describes the movie, but to me, it's like, mm, Carmilla's ex has come back to the dead and her current girlfriend has to deal with it, right? Yeah. Which is like a classic lesbian Yeah. Story, it's I think. too, too classic, right? <laughs> when your vampire girlfriend's ex has come back from the dead, it's just like I mean, something you gotta deal there. with, yeah? If I had a dime for <laughs> every time. I think the reason it's so vague for anyone who, hasn't, who isn't familiar with Carmilla is Carmilla the movie is a continuation of Carmilla the web series. So if you haven't checked that out, it is definitely worth watching. It is up on YouTube on Kinda TV's channel. And the web series is three seasons, a lot of growth, a lot of heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's certainly worth checking out, and it's great background to go into the movie with. And there's a couple reasons that I love that we're doing Carmilla. One of them is sort of precisely that. it's Carmilla's such a great story in terms of the best case scenario for kind of indie queer content out there. How you can watch the web series grow in terms of, you know, from the very beginning of that first season, it's just one tiny little room that they're all kind of shoved into Mm -hmm. all the time, barely fitting sometimes, you know, how much it grows every season and then watching it grow into this full length movie, I think is just, it's a great journey that you can go on with this little series, you know? I mean, if you look at the first episode, there are over a million views on that one episode. And that is crazy. crazy. Yeah. And I love this, too, because I got super into Carmilla. Like, one of my friends told me about it, and I just binged the crap out of it. Because it is, it's such a, such a binge-worthy web series. Most of the characters are queer. No one makes a big deal about the fact that they're queer. They're just all queer. And that's the kind of content that we want people to be making. So, of course, and I'm glad that this whole community has supported that web series. And they're at the point where they are now. And they're, you know, lesbian famous. (laughs) (laughs) The other reason that I love that we're doing this, Ellie, because Carmilla was one of the first conversations that you and I had must have been right around when you were binging it Mm -hmm. that you were telling me about the series. And it was like the first time that I think we realized how much we sort of tended to geek out about the same types of things. Yeah, how freaking Um, lesbian we are. (laughs) (laughs) So I just remember you telling me about it and how obsessed you were with it, and then I went home and binged it. Mm -hmm. I think that was sort of what started a lot of the the conversations that you and I had about realizing how, you know, how into a lot of the same kind of super queer stuff we are. Uh, And that's what led us here. Maybe we should talk about this. Here we are. Thanks, Carmilla. Here we are. Thank you, Carmilla. You, we owe you this podcast because yes. I think without that conversation, we wouldn't have known. We might not have gotten here. So so cute. <laughs> All right. Do you want to dive into this actual movie? Let's do it. So we start with our intro, which I love because it's just so Laura Hollis, her journalist side coming out and giving everyone the lowdown of what happened in the past five years and how they got to this movie. And she's just so cute. And then at one point she just says, Carm and I fell in love and I just, Ugh. I just lost it. <laughs> it's so cute. I love this opening scene because it's for anyone else who's a musical theater nerd the way that I am. And then I know Ellie is. If you've seen the show You're in Town, there's this great, great line in sort of the opening number with Officer Lockstock and Little Sally 
where he says, you know, careful little Sally, nothing kills a show like too much exposition. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love is that that's all this scene is, right? Yeah. It's just exposition. <laughs> yeah. It is just, and it is, it's super like journalistic vloggy. Like you almost feel like it should open with a little like, -da 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 -da, yeah, like yes. breaking news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> That is Laura. She's this yeah. little journalist just trying to trying to make it in the world. And I love it because they, they pull it off, you know, and mm -hmm. they kind of have to because I think they are, what they're trying to do is to make the movie accessible for people who haven't watched the web yeah. series. I mean, you have to assume there's going to be people who don't have the whole background. And so they're trying to lay out three seasons of a YouTube series in, you know, a couple minutes. Yeah. Towards the middle of the, um, of the movie, Kirsch says, wow, we have a lot of backstory, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they sort of poke fun at themselves, which is what I yeah. loved about the web series. It's so campy. Yeah. yeah, of course it's dramatic. Like, the things they get into are so dramatic, but it's also, like, cheesy and fun. And they are not afraid to make fun of themselves, which I love. Right, and it's great. I mean, they have their little faces popping up, so they're giving you the character names, you know. Yeah. Because just... <laughs> they're like, we're not going to introduce them again. You just need to know who these people are, mm -hmm. so here they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they have a lot of footage, and what I love about it is, as you transition into the first real scene of the movie, and the first scene in the movie, movie is a dream sequence of Laura's. Yes, which is number one on our drinking game rules. Yes, and is number one dream sequence of many dream sequences, so good luck with that drinking game already, you guys. Godspeed. <laughs> we do not take it easy on, on anyone. We really don't. These rules. We really don't. I'm sorry. So our first of many Laura dreams, and what I love is one of my first notes from when we watched this is, especially coming out of the exposition scene where they have footage from the web series and everything, it's so exciting to see like actual camera shots, you mm -hmm. know, where they're not just in a single frame, because that's what all three series of the web series had. It kind of brings the characters so much more to life to me. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and it also just shows like how how far they've come, like the increase in production value as the fans have increased, as their funding has increased. Yeah, And it's absolutely. exciting. It's really exciting to see, yeah, this little web series that could on the big screen. It's, it's, yeah. it's so cool. Yeah, I love it. But, you know, the sets got bigger, the effects a little bigger and a little better. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it's just, you know, the, the jump from season three to here yeah. is so big. And we're going full out now. And it's so cool. Yeah. And I also would just like to give a shout out to the wardrobe in this. Yes. Like Laura's dress. And we will see that dress again. Heck yeah, we will. Is <laughs> It's just, yeah, it's awesome. And yeah, she looks, she looks beautiful. And then we also see, speaking of beautiful... <laughs> Dom, baby. I have a note in this scene that just says, oh, hey, Dom. I literally was like, Dom in the mirror. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yes. And for those of you who don't know, this is Dominique Provost Chockley, who plays Waverly Earp on Winona Earp. And she's one of our favorites. And it was just so exciting to see all of these actresses on screen together. And she's fantastic in this. Oh, she's and we're, wonderful. It's super exciting to see her because she doesn't actually show up as a character for a little bit in the movie. And so I love that they sort of like tease her in there. Yeah. I think she was a, a huge get for them in the cast. She's a fantastic actress. Yeah. And also very popular and very well known in the queer community, mm -hmm. you know. And so I love that it's like within the first couple minutes of the movie, they're like, oh, and Dominique's here. And we're like, <laughs> thank God. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> But you were mentioning the dress and the Victorian wear, and I think that's the other thing that I love. The very next scene, which is when Carmilla and Laura are sort of, you know, debriefing about this dream in their apartment, which mm -hmm. is so cute. I love I the know. little domestic They're bliss so domestic. on their couch. <laughs> But I just love that Carmilla has this one comment about corsets. And so I just thought that was fantastic in terms of like also foreshadowing. They're just foreshadowing a lot in this intro. Oh, yeah. You know, they're like, oh, Dom's coming. Oh, BT Dub's corsets are coming. And you're like, <laughs> yes, bring on the corsets, yes. people. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I also loved they were like just sitting on the couch, like watching TV or whatever, just like any normal couple. And Laura says, hello, rom-com. And I'm like, oh, but we're like, this is not going to be a rom-com, honey. It's OK. No, it's like a it's like a ghosty thriller rom-com. Sure. Yeah, that's a sure. new genre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually a Netflix category. Mm. Oh, I just have some notes on the intro music. One, because I love that you get to hear the theme song, because it's something that you don't actually hear a lot in in the web series. You hear it at the end of every season. Mm -hmm. But Carmilla has a fantastic theme song, and if you haven't seen the video of Natasha and Elise singing it together, yeah, you should pretty look cool. that up, because they're awesome. 
And I just have this great note that says, what's with the creepy doll hands? Because I just didn't get the intro sequence because there's just a lot of like little hands. Oh, I think they were just trying to be like, this is a creepy movie. Let's make creepy intro. I don't know. And little doll doll hands hands. are creepy. You know, we have another dream sequence. Yes. You want to kill all our drinking game listeners. (laughs) Yes. Drink again, people. Actually, wait, I was going to I was going to skip that dream. (laughs) Sorry. Oh, you're going to skip the bloodbath dream? Wasn't there such a great thing about Natasha having to film that scene? Because they, like, dunk her in a whole tub of blood, right? Yes. I, well, I do have Carmilla bathing in blood. So creepy. But it just freaked <laughs> me out. It makes me feel uncomfortable. So I'm just... Which I guess was the point. I wonder what they dunked her in. I've seen some of the things about what they made the blood in the show out of, you know, like some of the things that they made her drink mm-hmm. during the series. I'm curious what they dunked her in because it just it looks unpleasant. Yeah, to be in, it does so. not look fun. Well, my next thing was more about their domestic bliss and the apartment. Oh, okay. And I just love like the props department did a killer job. Like Laura's freaking TARDIS coffee cup. Yes, I love that they kept the TARDIS mug. Just the little things that they put together in that apartment to make it so like perfectly both yeah. of them. Okay, which also I would like to point out because we haven't talked about Klexicon enough lately, of course. you guys. Yeah. Um, so I would like to say at the Holstein panel at Klexicon, where someone asked, I think it was like a fan question, someone asked who they would cosplay as. Yes. The characters, like if Carmilla and Laura went to a convention and cosplayed, who would they cosplay as? I think they would cosplay where she would go as the 13th Doctor and Natasha would go as one of the companions. I don't know which companion. Yes! But that would be my vote is... Because I think she'd be a Doctor Who person because she's got her little TARDIS mug. She obviously is. Yeah. We go into her vlog. Yeah. Which is like the highlight of my life. And I love that you see it from behind the scenes for once. Yes. You're so used to seeing her little her little vlog scenes from the show. And I love that now you get to see her little, you know, she does her little like trail off. And then I'm going to put a thing here. Yeah. And then we'll cut to this. (laughs) Yes. I know. I love it. I think it's also super relatable, right? Where, you know, you end the series and you're like, okay, well, like, what's going to happen for them? And Laura's, like, wanting to be this crazy, amazing journalist. And she's getting there. I mean, she's 25, right? Yeah. She's just a local news reporter. Like, she just keeps reporting on food. (laughs) I don't know. I just think it's really relatable that, like, these, these people have dealt with some crazy supernatural shit right yeah but also like down to their core like their people you know like especially laura is because carmilla you know is a person now but was a vampire right but she's she's a person with plans a lot of a lot of plans and i just think she's very like endearing and relatable how long of a plan exactly five-year plan baby a five-year plan and not just a five-year plan a five-year plan that is mocked up and put on a board which is like a little ridiculous. like a little craft she has like a little scrapbook five-year plan board and i love it also shout out to one of the items on that five-year plan which is buffy marathon yes i also wrote that down good <laughs> good catch lee i was like buffy marathon yes. yup yup yeah, yeah, and sure. Comic Con with Carmilla was on it too. Yes. And I was trying so hard to like focus on the movie, but also I was like, what? There are so many things that I want to read on this five year plan. It was so great. <sighs> we'll watch it again and we'll just pause on it yeah. and write down everything on it and we'll make that our five year plan. Yeah. It also made me be like, hmm, what's my five year plan? All right, we're not going to go there. Watch, we're going back to the movie. <laughs> But yeah. I think it's accurate, though. It's a good five-year plan, because that's, I always say it's, that's the first thing I did with my wife when we started dating, is to make her watch all of Buffy with me. So I think that's a perfectly valid five-year plan. Five year, yeah. Start with Buffy Marathon. Oh, yeah. I already got that down, so I feel like I'm doing yeah, okay. Jack, you're on your way. Yeah. Another part of the drinking game is every time Laura says plans, so. Which is also gonna. Yeah, really get gonna you. Gonna mess you up. Really get you. <laughs> Carm comes back. I just like that I called her Carm. Like, we're, like, best friends. Carmilla comes back, and this also, like, the amount of kissing they do is ridiculous. And this is such a good one. It is such a good kiss. When she just... The chocolate, chocolate on the lip. (sighs) We're, like, ten minutes into the movie. Give us a chance. I love it. They're giving the people what they want. And also, (laughs) like, that's... I don't know. I just... I love that that's how they are. Like, they can't keep their hands off each other. It's so... Even after five years. Oh, they're still Aww. there. Oh. Yeah. I have one last note on that scene, which I don't even remember how it comes up. I think it's when she makes the cake. Does she make Carmilla a cake? Yeah, she or makes something? her a cake. Her rebirthday. I just, 
Yeah, I just love them in Domestic Bliss. But of course, like, we can't keep on in the Domestic Bliss forever. No. And why not? It's time for another dream. Hooray. There's a lot of dream sequences in this movie. That vampire sex dream, though. (laughs) (laughs) Because uh, who hasn't had a vampire I mean, sex dream, you know? There's a couple of those, too. Yeah. Uh, and this is where Carmilla bites her. Yes. I mean, it, it could have been sexy maybe in the dream until she wakes up, and it's reality. Yeah. And she is no re- good. Yeah. And she's really biting her. That was, yeah, bad, bad. No one wants to wake up to their ex-vampire girlfriend being a vampire again. Yeah. And that was so rough. And you just see Carmilla's face being so upset that she just bit her girlfriend really hard. And- uh, with vampire teeth With as vampire well, teeth. Which- Probably less than ideal, but leads to the introduction, well, at least the movie introduction, of two of our favorite characters. Laugh and Perry! Laugh and Perry. We have a great diagnostic scene with Laugh and Perry as they first show up and try to help us figure out what is happening to Carmilla. To Carmilla. They're examining her and we're looking at her her heart and her life force or whatever, and they're, they start fighting over what what is it called, right? It's uh, <laughs> her life force called her, what else? Energy. One of them is an energy. Energy. Something. And then they end up yeah. on her spark, which her I spark. love. Yes. Yeah. I also love the just random casual mention that Laugh has a cyborg eye that never comes up again. Yes! I was kind of hoping that would come back at some point, like when they're fighting ghosts or something. Like, I wanted that to be something more, but apparently it's just this one scene. <laughs> that was like their effects budget for that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like, like okay, we have enough money for one scene of the cyborg guy and that's it. So <laughs> This is the only time we can actually use this effect, so here we go. <laughs> cool. I love Laugh and Perry. They are like an old married couple. Like, they're always bickering right from that first scene. Their diagnosis is something is happening to Carmilla's spark. So her spark that is keeping her human and no longer vampire is some sort of spell-based life force spark. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and it's going out. And it's going out. Well, at least it's flickering. It's mm-hmm. flickering in and out. They're worried it's going to go out. And when it flickers, she is a vampire again. I love this sort of sequence where it's like showing how she's vamping out. Yeah. And at one point, she's just eating a squirrel. <laughs> and she's like so happy about it. And I'm like, yes. yes. So uh, weird. And she's eating a squirrel in a way that kind of mirrors mirrors the intro scene with her getting like a croissant or something from yes, her, right. It's like the same thing, but it's just her with a tiny with little a squirrel. dead squirrel. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there we have it. There is the sort of central issue that's going to take up the movie is how do we solve the problem with Carmilla Spark? Yes. For our Patreon supporters, we have viewing parties. And I think it was at this point that a Tegan and Sarah song came on as part of yes. the soundtrack. <laughs> yep. I just needed to bring that up because we're we're in a viewing party with a bunch of other queer women and everyone's like, oh, Tegan and Sarah. Yeah. And then yep. Barbie and Rose, who are two of our patrons, just casually mention that their youngest daughter's middle name is Tegan. <laughs> I was like, this is uh, one of the gayest thing that's ever <laughs> happened while watching a lesbian movie. So I just wanted to share that with all of you because it was a beautiful moment. But also, Tegan and Sarah is not the last time that the soundtrack to this movie is just going to be on point. Oh yeah, the soundtrack is killer. Of, I love the soundtrack. Their queer audience, yes. you know. So yeah, I definitely have a note for that scene that just says, Tegan and Sarah, A+. plus." <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I love it so much. So we realize that Carmilla in the dream is saying to Laura all these things. And then when Laura says those things back to Carmilla, Carmilla remembers, oh, wait, those were things that I said to my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> e, I feel like this might be real life. Mm. Yeah. Because we've all been there, right? Where you're like, wait, I sent that message on Tinder to someone else as well. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Never. No copy Never. and paste on that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also like, what a dramatic thing to be like, oh, damn. My girlfriend said to her ex... You are mine. You shall be mine. You and I are one forever. 
Which also, can we just discuss, because here's the thing that I love about this. So we're going to we're going to find out later on when we get there. But as soon as Elle found out that Carmilla was a vampire, they broke up. Yeah, right. She was out. like they were never together with like, you know, Laura and Carmilla kind of started dating with full awareness on Laura's part that she was dating a vampire. Yes. Elle never had that. So what I would w- like to know is like, what kind of kinky stuff were they doing that? Like that was a totally normal <laughs> conversation. Right? Because right? <laughs> it seems kind of like dark and vampiric to me. Yeah. And she was like, oh, no, that's just her. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, no, that was just our bedroom talk. Yeah. She's like, just a little broody. Ooh. What? Eighteen hundreds bedroom talk, you guys. <laughs> yeah, you are mine. You and I are we one. We shall be one forever. forever. Yeah, right. As a result, they assemble the whole team and they have a little Toronto picnic out in the park oh. where they get everyone together now. So they have Laugh and Perry are back. They have Kirsch is there. Yes. I love Kirsch. Also, the only dude in this movie, yeah. which is great. Kirsch always always holding it down. Mel is there. It's just, it's like the whole team's back together and yes. it's so exciting. <laughs> My other note on this scene is I love that Carmilla uh, rocking a choker like it's 1999. <laughs> well, she's the vampire, so like her, she can do whatever she wants with her style, right? I know. Is that a thing though? Like, are chokers back? Is that, oh, are chokers are back? so back. Is that? Yeah, the know. 90s are back. I don't know how I feel about that. For real. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely worn a choker out, not going to lie. Ooh, there yeah. needs to be photos of that. Are there yeah. photos? I might be able to find them. Well, yeah. see if we can dig some Because, up. yeah, I was dig up pretty some recent. Alien choker so, photos. yeah. Even if I go back to the 90s, I don't think I have photos of me in a choker. Yeah. Yeah, it was a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here first. Chokers are back. They're back, so. people. Or at least I heard it here first. Yeah. I am out of the loop, you guys. But, yeah, then this brings us into our travel sequence, which I... Love. And I think this also was one of the previews. Oh, was it? The, yeah. The back to Styria? Yeah, it was like a promo, I think, of them. Because this is like another part where they just dig into the camp. Oh, the slow-mo scene. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yes, now we, we realize, okay, the dreams are real. Elle is trying to communicate. We need to go back to Elle's manor in Styria, which yes. Carmilla has not been back to in a very long time. And so they're like, all right, let's all travel to Syria. And then it's them with all their with all their suitcases and looking so badass and cool. And then this <laughs> there's the record scratch. This is way too far of a walk to get to this yeah. freaking manor. <laughs> but before that, they have the travel sequence that's a little overlay, like the map. Oh the yes. Little, the little flight line. And what I love about that is it reminded me of Anastasia. Did you ever see Anastasia? Yes. And there's that whole sequence when they're like going to Paris finally. Yes. And that's what it reminded me of. It made me super nostalgic. So my wife had not seen it. We watched it this year because she was not nearly impressed enough with how I knew every single word to every single song in the entire movie of Anastasia. Yeah. Despite not having seen it in like a decade. But I love that movie. It holds up, you guys. It holds. It, it stands does. the test of time. Anastasia should have been gay. Next. But yeah, then we finally do get to Elle's Manor. Yes. And it's creepy the as schloss. all hell. The schloss. What does Perry say? Like, what a fine example of a schloss. Yeah. And then Kirsch goes, huh, schloss. <laughs> schloss. And I was like, honestly, same Kirsch. Like, yeah. I think I'm the dude bro in this scenario. I also love the first scene in the schloss. It's such good lighting. There's a lot of scenes in here where it's just, again, it, I'm sort of geeking out over watching them get to do this with, like, real shots and real, you know, cameras mm-hmm. and real everything. And, yeah, the lighting in this scene was excellent. Yes. With the dust and the everything and the sort of very diffuse. I loved it. The lines here are incredible. Yes. Because they're talking about, you know, what weapons to have, blah, blah, blah. And Mal just says, pretty sure weapons are the best weapons. Because she brought her crossbow, whose name is Gertrude. Yes. And like, of course, your crossbow is named Gertrude. And then, I mean, and then you have Laura's best line of the whole movie, which is going to come back. I know Krav Maga. I am a weapon. Which little, little Laura Hollis saying that is just like the best, the best thing ever. The other thing I love is... That just made me really happy is that Laugh is wearing a uniform for the company that they own with Perry, Mm -hmm. um, which is called LaFerry Industries. And so they just have on a LaFerry uniform the entire time, which I'm like, yes, 
Yes. Yes, LaFerry, yes. Yes. Where is it? Give it to us. Everyone ships LaFerry, so let's Everyone. just make it happen, people. Also, <laughs> this is sort of a tangent, but not really. <laughs> this is also when you walk in, the, one of the first times you see the portrait of Elle. Yeah. It is a really unflattering photo to me. It doesn't look like her at all. It does not look like Dom at all to me. I'm like, this is no. No, no people. That's like and it's- my one complaint about the movie is that Dom picture. And it's funny because it's the first, there's two portraits that you see in this scene. There's the Dom portrait that doesn't look like her. And there's the Natasha portrait. portrait, which does look like her. It looks exactly like her and it look and it, right. she looks amazing. And I'm like, did the same person do these two portraits? <laughs> and like, can somebody please fix Dom's face? Because like, yeah, you really did not do her justice in that portrait. I have this note that just says like the Beauty and the Beast portrait, like why Carmilla's portrait just has this giant tear in it a la Beauty and the Beast when he, like, shreds all the yeah. all the paintings in the house. Like, why? I'm guessing that Elle just slashed it. Like, just, yeah. she was pissed. But I love that it's not, like, a hand slash, so it's like, did she literally go out and get a knife? Yeah, she must and, have. And, like, yeah. cut it. Just cut it. Just cut <laughs> it up. Hardcore ex-anger right there. A lot there. of repressed anger there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> also, <laughs> like to say, the fact that her name is L. L is my legal name, so... E-L-L-E is how I would usually spell it, but I don't anymore because Ellie, but... Because Ellie. Good explanation. Good Ellie. explanation. Well but every time they say L, I'm like, it's me! <laughs> oh my god! The movie's actually all about you. Yeah, it is. Fun fact. I don't hate being played by Dom, so... In the movie of your life, that's who you would choose to play you? Oh my god, yeah. I mean, she doesn't quite have the ginger thing going on. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe Caparel. I uh, would obviously be Diego Luna. Yeah, I can see that for you. He's my celebrity lookalike. Mm-hmm. No one ever believes me until I Google it and show them a picture. And they're like, oh, you look a lot like Diego Luna. Yeah, and I say, exactly. I like, It's just good to know, you guys. It's good to have in your back pocket for, you know, when they make your biopic. It's good to know who should play you. Yeah. Please let us know who would play you in your biopic. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Oh, I would say biopic. I think it's biopic. Okay. Well, if I'm wrong, someone will make fun of me and let us know. I hope so. They do. That's good. Probably my father. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Most likely, the first person to correct me would be my dad. So. Yes. But yeah, speaking of exes, as we see Dom's picture, <laughs> then then we realize, oh, this whole place is haunted. Ton of ghosts. Ton, ton of ghosts. ghosts. Every single one of them is Carmela's ex. This schloss is just chock full of ghosts who used to date Carmela. Yep. <laughs> And there's a lot of them. Two of whom are the Bronte sisters, which I love. Yes. Oh. And which I think they don't ever really say explicitly in any dialogue. I think they name them in the credits, but I mean, it's very obvious that they're supposed to be the Bronte sisters, and I kind of love it. Well, now that you say that, it was not obvious to me at all. So clearly not. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Of course, you, Charlotte and Emily. Did you not know that? Now I know. Oh, I think it's in the credits also. And that's why they have that, that line at the end about tuberculosis, because I think they both actually died of tuberculosis. Oh my god, that all went over my head. Oh, I feel so much better now about how many things in Imagine Me and You, you and Kelsey made fun of me for, like, as as though I've apparently never seen this the movie before. But yeah, so then we see all these ghosts, and <laughs> it's like, oh, all of Carmilla's exes, and then they're like, Oh, do you want to have dinner? And because I love it because they do it in this way where they are so campy and over the top with the dramatic thunder usage yes. in that scene. Right. So they keep having these things where they're like, boo, dark, ominous thunder. And then they'll like completely cut the thunder sounds and be like, we'd like to have you for dinner. Yeah, And you're like, <laughs> what the? It's amazing. It's so cheesy. And it's so it's so over the top. But it just works. It just works. It's, it works. It really so well. does. It really does. It brings us to the dinner party, and I just wrote, Carmilla drinking her wine is all of us. Because <laughs> literally, it's just Carmilla sitting at a table with all of her exes, and she just is chugging yeah. her wine. Like, <laughs> I gotta get out of here. Like anyone would in that situation. Uh, she should just be doing, like, straight shots of whiskey or something. Oh my god, yeah. Um, You're sitting at a table with a giant suckling pig in the middle with all your exes and your current girlfriend. It's every lesbian's nightmare, I think. It's <laughs> what's just, happening. It's every lesbian's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Leah. I can never let you live that down. 
<sighs> but it's okay. I'm sure I'm going to have exes at my wedding. To, let's be real. So it's Of course fine. you will. Everyone yeah. does. There's also a great line from Perry where she says, it's not polite to pry into others' unspeakable horror, yes. which I just think is great. <laughs> the most awkward dinner party ever. But we do find out a little more, right, about why these things are happening. Yes. What they say is they move on and Carmilla stays human. They have all been summoned quite recently from a nightmare dreamscape of their biggest regret. Yes. That they were all existing in, which sounds great. So that's what they lay out at dinner for our little Silas University gang to go back and sort of debrief in their room. This is the scene, right, where Mel says, I'm not dealing with that black girl dies first bullshit. Yeah, that's when they go out to find Kirsch for his late late, late snack. But yes, that is a fantastic line. Yes, yes, yes. Here you go. Carmilla is just like every single like shitty trope that's ever happened to non-binary people, queer people, people of color, like fuck you all. It's not happening yeah, here. Not happening here. And I love it. My only note about them debriefing in the room before that though is that it's LaFerry fighting and I hate it. I know. And they're having a fight about their company and it makes me sad. It's also part of the drinking game. I know we're sad about it, but every time they bicker, please drink. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah. So don't miss that one. But then, yes, they end up having to send someone out to go hunt down Kirsch because Kirsch has gone for a late night snack. Of course. Of course. Mel goes after him and they then overhear Charlotte and Emily having a very suspicious conversation mm -hmm. that we don't quite understand yet. But when they come out of the room, I love Kirsch and Mel hiding up against the wall. Yes. <laughs> and like this awkward freeze frame you know, no one can see me. It just completely adds to all the perfect campiness of everything. I yes. love it. They do such a good job with kind of hitting that line every time, you yeah. know? It's never too campy. It's like just campy enough. Yes. Some nice levity to all of these super dramatic things. And yes. speaking of, then we have another dream sequence. And Laura Hooray! just goes, this again? Really? <laughs> like, yes. which anyone playing our drinking game is probably gonna feel similarly exactly, already like, by this same point. laura though too many <laughs> dream sequences but this is a great dream sequence because again the dream sequences i actually thought were really well done you yes. know where they're kind of playing with this abstract symbolic things that keep happening where they're sort of giving you hints but they're not completely clear what they are there's the brooch and then the the paper Ring of girls. Yeah, the ring of paper fire girls, yeah. That starts burning away. Super not creepy at all. Yeah, yeah, nothing in this movie, no. Not a ominous warning or anything. No, this is the one where Carmilla comes back and, like, being so cute, you know? Going to New York, right? There's too many dreams to keep track of. <laughs> Honestly, way too many. <laughs> There's too so many. many dream sequences, you guys. We're, we're doing our best. We're trying. It's the ring of paper girls that burn away. And then what we find out is Emily and Charlotte's big secret that they were talking about is not super ominous. It's a ball. Hooray. Yes. Hooray. <laughs> we're throwing you a party. Shout out to the costumes again because oh, yes. then we see Laura in this freaking gown again. I mean, we all know. We all know. <laughs> this scene where Carmilla says 40 minutes to get you into that bet I could get you out of it faster I my literal note on this scene it just says hot damn period where <laughs> yeah so good so good and she does get her out of it faster she does and I'm like the sex scene is so good but a part of me is like it took her so long to get into that come on totally worth it I guess, yeah. <laughs> totally worth it. Definitely, Come on. Worth, definitely worth First it. First of all, uh, again, soundtrack on point, uh, Explode by Aha uh -huh Her. Yes. So good. Second of all, what a fantastic scene. I oh mean, I know I'm going to, oh, this is like the super geeky lesbian in me that's going to be like, let's talk about the staging and the cinematography of no, this lesbian true. sex scene. True. But it's really well done. And Let's be honest, we do not get a lot of these. Yes. <laughs> There's yes. not a lot of well-done lesbian sex scenes because you watch so many movies or, or shows where you're just like, did they, like, not consult a Any lesbian, lesbian? Yeah. in the making of this? Like, you know, I think I remember in, it was one of the later Pretty Little Liars episodes <laughs> where they show Emily and Allison, 
in bed as part of, you know, like a montage of all the couples. And I think Heather Hogan's autostraddle recap was just making fun of how their interpretation of lesbian sex is like, your knees are touching. Oh my God. <laughs> in a bed. <laughs> well, yeah, no. And that's what we get a lot of the time, yeah. you know? And this is a good sex sequence. At one point, she kisses her knee, and, like, part of me is like, okay, I said that out loud, and I'm like, that doesn't <laughs> sound sexy. But, like, when they do it, it's really sexy. Yeah. And then Laura goes underneath Carmilla's skirt, right? Mm-hmm. And I just wrote... Those big Victorian skirts. I just wrote, I'm done. Many, <laughs> many times. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Ellie, Ellie died a couple times yeah. this scene. Well, and then I also feel like I really love when they show people's backs in sex scenes. Yeah. I mean, if they have, like, a good back. Laura has a good back. <laughs> Weird. But you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, that part where she has her shirt off, and then, like, you yep. have, like, the hands on the back. No, the hands. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to sidetrack us real quick on this because, oh, my God. So let's talk about CluxCon just for a quick hot second, you guys. I have, like, a stack of business cards of artists from Artist Alley at CluxCon, and one of them I know she had a lot of Carmilla paintings, and they're very, like, realistic, like, not, like, hyper-realistic, yeah. just, like, realistic paintings. And she has a beautiful painting of that shot of Laura's back with Carmilla's hands on it. Yes, and it I remember that. banging. It is so good. It was awesome. I would totally get a print of that. So if someone either happens to know off the top of their heads, or if I go through my stack of business cards and figure out who it was, I will post that on Twitter or something. Yes. It's a great shop. It's not just that it's a very accurate, I think, representation of actual lesbian sex, which we don't see a lot. Yeah. But it's just really beautifully done. It's very beautifully staged. It's very, like, artfully shot, that whole scene. And I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's so good. And yes, of course it's hot. But yeah, it's, like, really, really well done for a lesbian sex scene. Like, it's very realistic and like gives us a good portrayal of that but the only thing that was unrealistic we leave that scene laura's hair looks fucking great (laughs) i'm sorry girl was underneath suddenly they're both dressed again yeah suddenly they're dressed they look amazing like come on girl was underneath her skirt like i wanted her to go to that freaking ball and her hair is like so fucked up yeah right (laughs) (laughs) and you, you can just tell that they just had sex Yep. But, you know, whatever. Also, super subtle thing that I loved, which is when they're running down the stairs. So in that scene where it's like, oh, you know, now we finished. Now we somehow got dressed again and we're running, running to catch the ball with everyone else. Mm -hmm. I just love that the only line that Carmilla has as they're running down the stairs is she just goes, I'm coming. Oh, my God. (laughs) And I just think (laughs) I think that's such a great little super like subtle thing to slide. (laughs) Yes, I love that. that scene. (laughs) <laughs> that I just thought was hilarious. But they do finally make it to the ball. We don't know how late. We don't get a timeline on how long it took to get Laura back into yeah, that dress. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> yeah, we'll give them some time to fix her hair. We'll give them some time. But then they're at the ball where everyone is in their, you know, Victorian wear. And they all look amazing. Mel looks amazing. And she's having sparks a flying everywhere with Charlotte. Yes. And I ship it so hard. I love them so much. Uh, do they have a ship name? I feel like they might. And I don't know what it is, but I love them. Mellet. Is that it? Charmel. Charmel. I like Charmel. I could do Charmel. Sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I choose you, Charmel. Charmel. <laughs> yeah and i mean they're uh, great and then you have laugh and perry dancing together it's just like everyone is having a great time at the ball also charlotte has this great line that i love where she just says if you have to conform you never belonged and i just love it it's what i love about this movie i mean a what we're saying about you know the sex scene and things like this like these are the kinds of things that you get when you have queer people involved in the making of queer content yeah A, it's accurate, and B, you get little lines like that where you're just like, yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes, I love it. So yes, please have queer people involved in your projects, especially if they are projects about queer people or queer characters or queer topics, um, because we can tell. (laughs) Yes, and we can really tell with this movie. It's very well done. Somebody shows up at the ball that we've been waiting for this whole time. Dom? <gasps> L's at the ball. L's at right? the Right, there's ball. that whole scene where Laura's seeing the woman in black. Who's the woman in black? And we're like, we know uh, who the woman in black is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just and saying. It is I know L. it's bad, but like, 
I root for Elle in this movie. <laughs> you would. I really do. I'm like, is isn't Elle the protagonist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, but yes, we do sort of see Elle, but she doesn't make a full appearance, right? Yeah, she doesn't really play her hand yet. Yeah, because she doesn't want to, because we have to do the ritual. The Ash Moon ritual, which I am just going to sidetrack us real quick, because I did some research. Are you proud of me? Yes, I'm so proud. Okay, so I was curious if the Ash Moon was like a real thing, because I'd never heard of that, right? Yes, I haven't heard of it either. I was like, the full moon? No? Yeah. Okay. The ash moon. Um, and they kept showing the moon. So anyways, I did some quick Googling, and what I found is that there is a Celtic alphabet of Owam, spelled O-G-H-A-M, but apparently pronounced Owam. Okay. And it is an alphabet that is linked to native British trees, and so each tree has its own moon cycle and Oam symbol that goes along with it. And one of those is the ash. Uh, so they have lunar months and there's one of them that's the ash moon, which is the third moon of the Celtic year. And what I love about this is the ash moon is symbolic of the world tree, which is representative of the inner and outer worlds being connected. So it says in many mythologies, the ash represents connections Roots in the underworld, trunks in our middle earth, and branches reaching to the heavens and beyond. And meditating with the ash can help connect and understand the past. So I don't know if the writers actually did that research too when they came up with using the ash moon for this, but well played, guys. It was very good. Wow. I know. That is far deeper. Isn't it? Right? Than I thought. Yeah. I kept assuming it was just like a cheesy throwaway thing where they were like, this sounds fancy and- This sounds cool. Yeah, the ash, ash moon. moon. <laughs> but, you know, someone might be super into Celtic mythology. So there you go. The ash moon that they are doing this ritual under, which is, you know, bringing together the the underworld and the past and the present and- and all of Carmilla's past deeds and ex-girlfriends. I just, I thought that was great. So there you go. Thank you for doing that research, Lee. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, You're welcome. My researching girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they start their ritual, and they expect this ritual to be a ritual to free the spirits of all of the ex-girlfriends uh, <sighs> and restore Carmilla's spark. And human life. Mm, it's not going to do that, huh? It is not the case, you guys. That is not what We're happens. not far enough in the movie. Nope. We find out that this was Elle's plan all along. Uh, uh, to uh, all of the spirits start disappearing, right? Burning away like the paper girls in the dream. Oh, like the paper girls. Into ash, like the ash moon. It's all Ooh. happening, you guys. It's all coming together. It's all starting to make sense. And then I just wrote, laugh, no! I have that exact same note! <laughs> mm. Because it's not all the girls, right? La Fontaine jumps in and they push Charlotte out of the way and they get turned to ash instead. Yeah. And Perry's face is what all of us feel, which yeah. is, no, don't no. do it! Little little laugh pile of ash, and it's the saddest yeah. thing ever. It's so sad. Uh, and Dom, well, Dom, Dom shows up. Elle shows up. <laughs> I know. We also were talking to the people in our viewing party how funny it was. We kept referring to Elle as Dom because, it's a like, as the actress instead of her character. Because to me, it's just like it's Dom. Yeah, evil Dom, but Dom, you know, <laughs> evil Dom is my favorite Dom. <laughs> All kinds of scare roused, you know? <laughs> I also love the scene sort of ends because um, Carmilla falls to the ground as well. And mm -hmm. Laura thinks she's dead, but she's not dead. She's just definitely a vampire again for realsies. Yep. You know, they're on the floor. She's hugging Carmilla to her and it totally mirrors the series finale. Yeah. And the web series, right? Where at the very end of season three, where Carmilla's holding Laura when Laura dies, but then gets brought back. So I liked that. It was a good throwback for fans of the web series. There's a lot going on. There's so many emotions. There's so many things happening right now because you have everyone just disappeared. Laugh just disappeared. Carmilla, Ugh. you know, well, died slash became a vampire again. And so you have Perry and Laura coming from very different places in terms of like what their priorities are, you know, because they're both mm -hmm. fighting for like the people that they love. Their love. They, I know. 
and but they want different things, you know? So Perry's primary thing is to get laugh back. Like they disappeared, they need to get them back. And then Laura's thing is Carmilla's a vampire again. How do we make her human? You know, and and Yeah. Uh, uh. And I'm like, mm, but how do we get L her happy ending? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. That's my priority. And then there's Ellie's priority, which is L. Um She's a little different from some of our other protagonists in the film, but that's okay. I don't know. I love her. <laughs> and I love, what I love about this scene, too, is I love, you know, once Carmilla wakes up and is like, I'm not dead, I'm here. I like that she reassures Laura with the five-year plan. Like, smooth move. Smooth move, Carmilla. I know. That is the way to her heart. <laughs> We're still going to do the plan. Drink again for the plan. <laughs> Always drink for the plan. It's a far cry from the young, naive Carmilla that we see in our next dream sequence. So drink again, you guys. This dream sequence just kills me every time. And I'm sorry, this is why I root for Elle. Girl did not even know that her lover was a vampire. Yeah. We have young, naive Carmilla who's going to take us, take us to New York. And she is just, it's such a different... It's such a different Carmilla for her to play, you know? And I love that. I love... Yeah, than we've ever seen. And I actually really like Natasha that way. I do, too. It's, like, it's a very new side of her, you know? We're so used Mm -hmm. to, like, broody, angsty, confident, I've been around for hundreds of years, Carmilla. I love when we get to see just, you know, youthful, innocent, like, almost ingenue Carmilla. She's very different. But nothing's going very well. Nothing's going according to plan. Elle is sort of stalking around, getting more people. We have Kirsch disappearing in a little dust pile as well with this little sandwich on top. Oh my top. god, poor Kirsch. <laughs> Literally, when I see just a sandwich on a pile of ash, <laughs> I love the it. Best. <laughs> so oh everyone's so everyone's sort of getting disappeared into the, the nightmare dreamscape. Which they, they kind of gloss over how Elle is doing that exactly, but that's fine. Yeah, we're just going to just forget yeah. about it. The next thing I want to talk about, though, is the tea sequence where she's kind of in... I think we're blurring the lines now of, like, what's a dream, what's reality, what's in what's in the schloss, what's in someone's head. Um, but she has tea. Yeah, I honestly, I don't no even one knows, know. right? <laughs> yeah. No But clue. they have this great sequence where she's like, do we have to do this again? And, and Elle's like, ugh, fine. And so they just like sit down and have tea together. And I, I love it. I just love this scene. Yes. She's like, okay, I guess we won't do this dreary thing. Let's just, Let's have, tea. just have tea. Even in this movie that is about freaking vampires and dead ghosts and whatever. There's so many things that are so gay. Your girlfriend's ex-girlfriend yeah. warning you about yeah. her. She's going to break your heart just like she broke mine. Like too much over tea pinkies out you know over tea yeah over tea <laughs> super civil ex-girlfriend talking to current girlfriend like mm, i'm trying to help yeah. you girl and are you and i also but i love this scene too because it's just this is i think the scene for me where you can really see dominique shine as an actress like her face in this scene just does so many things there's so many little like things or expressions or twitches or like how she reacts to things that Laura says. It's just, it's great. It's a great scene. And so they come up with this plan, right, to to try to trap Elle. I think Laura comes up with this plan. Someone comes up with a plan. They're going to trap Elle. They use Charlotte as bait. Yes. Uh, which doesn't work out super well because she still gets sent to the dreamscape. Which I have a bone yes. to pick with that, because I thought the whole thing about Elle sending all of these people to the nightmare, you know, dream world as part of the ritual, that the only reason that it hadn't worked was that Laugh threw themselves in the way and Charlotte didn't get sent to the nightmare world. So now Charlotte's not so there, there, so what's the right? problem? Okay, well, I feel like maybe the problem is that Laugh's not supposed to be there. Like, that humans aren't supposed to be there. Oh, Maybe. So it's that laugh went in, not that laugh went instead of Charlotte. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Let's say that that's Good. that. Good work. Good logic. Yes. I like it. <laughs> right? But they have this They have this fight sequence. They're trying to trap Elle. Laura breaks out her Krav Maga, finally. The one thing I love about this scene is that Elle, <laughs> Elle's like, oh, you're not serious. You're really trying to trap me. <laughs> you know, she's like, she's like, wait, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Bye. She's like, silly humans. Yeah. So yeah, silly humans, you idiots. And then she just kills everyone. <laughs> yes. So 
So now everyone's <laughs> stuck in a dreamscape, right? Everyone is in this nightmare realm where you're just supposed to relive your biggest regret over and over and over again. Sounds super happy. Uh, I don't really understand yeah. the whole thing of why Laura starts out waking up in like a white room and then has to find everyone. But either way, Laura's kind of going through to try to find everyone and save them all from the dreamscape. So yeah, my favorite thing is that Laura's nightmare is that her five-year plan doesn't work out, right? And it just says on the board, Comic-Con canceled. Which is the worst. I'm like, oh, poor girl. Her Comic-Con got canceled. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. Life is over. Life as we know it. Uh, my favorite thing in that scene or somewhere around that scene is there's... I, Laura has this one line where she says something about, you know, have I ever gone down without a fight and i love it it's very it's like a, a shout out to like the legends of tomorrow stuff right now with like when did a legend ever go quietly like i like that yes so laura's laura's like on a mission she's like f this i'm gonna save everyone and laura is a krav maga um, badass she is she is a weapon so, <laughs> <laughs> so she starts running around uh and i think she finds carmilla first right ends up in Carmilla's nightmare. Yes. Uh, and so we finally get to find out what happened with Carmilla and Elle. We finally get to see <sighs> and it's the just, famous breakup. It's just so rough. It is rough. It's so rough for her to have to see that again. Because you can tell, like, she thinks she could have done something to prevent it, right? Yeah. I go back and forth with Elle here. I feel for her. But also, I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> that's that's nice uh, yeah i'm like i feel for you but you're stupid no <laughs> but like if she just didn't go with her freaking crazy mother maybe they would have still been in new york right now yeah just having a ball i mean i understand it's like oh i found out that you know i'm dating a monster like whatever, whatever. <laughs> but she she's like super dramatic about it you know like with the whole like well she drank my blood with the hand bleeding everywhere and you're like a, why did you need to, like, slice your hand open for this to work? Like, that seems... Yeah, that was too much. Like, that was too much. It's a little overkill, right? Yeah. And B, like, maybe talk it out. Come on. Like, we're lesbians. Process your feelings, you guys. Exactly. Just have a little <laughs> chat, and then you would not <laughs> have died. I know. And poor Carmilla, like, real, real Carmilla's, like, just cowering in the corner, like, watching this over and over and over again. Just... <sighs> yeah, it's rough. Ugh, it's so sad. <sighs> so... Luckily, Laura finds her. She's there to pull her out of her, you know, nightmare dreamscape loop regret. And then we have this whole scene with Carmilla and Laura on the staircase, right? Yeah. And this one just gets me, too, because then Laura's like, what about our grandkids? What about our children? Well, because Carmilla's being so noble, you know, she's like, how how is it fair that I get this life? And And, you know, really questioning whether whether she thinks that she deserves the life that she has with Laura. And yeah. it's sad. It is sad. <laughs> so sad. Like, I feel like Carmilla's like the hard-hitting journalist now in this scene, you know, which you think should be Laura. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, Laura, God, her... I, I have my note for this scene. It just says, this scene is ripping my heart out. Yeah, like, Laura's it's face so the whole much. time. But then also the thought of Carmilla and Laura having kids is like, it rips your heart out. But then you're also like, oh, but that would be so cute. I know. I know. Oh. Oh. And then, yeah, Carmilla will just be this 25 year old forever. Yeah. She said, yeah. how can we have our life if you're just going to live life as a 25 year old forever? And I'm like, wait, can I do that? <laughs> too late too late you could do 25 again it's fine yeah. we could do 25 a couple times yeah i'm going to sure forever For forever forever but it i think it's you know this is kind of the crux of the movie because it is i mean it, i think it's something that they did really well in terms of you know l l is the villain of the movie but she's not coming from a, a different place you know they're just it sort of really gets at that heart of like Everyone thinks they're the good guy. Yes, you know? and I still think that Elle's the good guy. <laughs> I know I know you do. I know you do. She just wants her life. 
But you know who the real good guy is? It's Laura, who's, like, busting up this dreamscape, saving everyone from all of their nightmares. Yes. They go find, uh, Laugh. They go find Perry in her strangely bureaucratic nightmare. I know. I'm like, <laughs> it's not really that strange. That seems normal to me. But yes. They go find Kirsch, who's being hunted again. Oh. <laughs> Poor Kirsch. Well, then there's a point where when Laugh takes Perry out of the dream, she goes, oh, I could just kiss you. Yeah. Right? But then she doesn't. But then they don't. I'm like, why Come didn't on, you just Perry. kiss them? Come on. Here's the thing. I know they're like, you know, they're teasing the, the show right now. And is it going to be a, a TV series or something? I say we need the show just so that we can have like a slow burn LaFerry Endgame. Yes, LaFerry Endgame in seven years. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, seven seasons. Like, I would wait for it that long. That's oh, yeah. okay. If they if they wanted to do that, like, sign me up. It's I'll like a there. bones burn. But better, because it'd be LaFerry. Yes. Uh, so now we have second, it's like, ritual take two, electric boogaloo. Uh, <laughs> this time with a cake. Yeah, and then Laura says, it's a cake now. Don't ask. Why not? I mean, look, if things in my life just randomly turned into cake, I wouldn't ask. Yeah, no. I would take the cake. Does Kirsch eat it or, like, do something weird? Oh, with the cake? I don't know. Does he? I feel like he would, but I don't think he did in the movie. There's, like, a behind-the-scenes uh, shoot somewhere of, of just Kirsch, Kirsch eating, eating the cake, cake and then the whole ritual's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Elle shows up to try to stop the ritual. Luckily, Gertrude is there to save the day. Oh, Gertrude, our fave. Our fave. So Mel finally gets to bust out her weapons are the best weapon and like straight up shoots Elle in the shoulder. It was pretty badass. It was pretty badass. And yeah. Mel gets her happy ending to happy-ish, right? Does she? Are we calling that a happy ending? I guess it's not that happy, but she's just, she does get a kiss. I know. And uh, that last line of like, thank you for the dance. I wish there could be another. And you're like, Aww. me too. Yeah. There should be another. Uh, but no, instead, our fair Bronte sisters depart, not to a nightmare dreamscape, but onto whatever afterlife comes next. Which I guess is, you know, best case scenario for ghosts. Yeah. And I do still think that Elle gets her happy ending. Because at the end, yeah. you see her, when she also goes to her peace or pl whatever, you see her smile. Yeah, it's subtle, right? It's a, like a subtle little look. Yeah, but Dom crushes that acting game, and I saw it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So there you go. Everything has been set right, I guess, as right as we're going to get. Mm -hmm. So ghosts have moved on. Carmilla is a vampire again. Everyone, you know, all of the, the Silas crew is back. And they all wake up, and my favorite thing, so I have this note when they're all waking up from this whole ritual, because we watch this with, with the closed captions on. I think my favorite closed caption in the entire movie happens now, and it just says, beautiful electro music. <laughs> okay. I mean, but, <laughs> shout out to the soundtrack, it probably was beautiful electro music. Oh, yeah. I mean, great soundtrack. Yeah. So, I thought that was great. My other question is, so Elle and Carmilla, like, wake up and... You mean Laura and Carmilla? Yes, yeah, sorry. Laura and Carmilla wake up Twist. and are having... <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> Laura and Elle have switched bodies. Uh, oh my god, that would be a twist, right? Yeah. Um, no, Laura and Carmilla wake up and everyone else is waiting outside for them with their suitcases, like, ready to go. Like, when did they pack? That's yeah, what I want to know. I don't know. Well, I'm assuming also probably Laura and Carmilla had a lot of sex and they were like, all right, while you guys are having sex, <laughs> we're just going to go. Bye. Uh, you think they just snuck that in? Yeah. They're like, oh, we're not in a nightmare, like ritual dreamscape world anymore. Yeah. Better bone. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it. I mean, take advantage of the schloss while you're on vacation. Right. You know, now that the ghosts Corsets are Corsets and all that. <laughs> yeah. Carmilla's like, let's get you in that dress one more time. Just and then one out more. of that dress one more just time. one more time. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so they, they wake up, they head out, everyone's ready to go, they fly back home, we have now picnic take two, everything is electric boogaloo, everything gets a second round. So we have another picnic, figuring out what comes next, you know, I think everyone's just kind of trying to plan, especially Laura, you know, what is what do you do? Of course. Without a plan. What do you do? And then there's this beautiful Carmilla line that I just need to shout out. They're sitting there, like, snuggly, whatever, and she's like, I'm just gonna go get some blood, babe. 
<laughs> like I'm yeah, gonna just get, I'm just gonna grab a beer. Just casual. Just gonna get some blood, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want anything? Blood, Lacroix, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anything anything um also we get to see danny i know hey danny i don't know why she wasn't in more of the movie but i'm gonna assume it was scheduling conflict yeah but it was nice to see her at least a little bit yeah no it was good to see her at the end and uh her and kirsch back together again yeah cutie Uh, pies if they do have a series i hope she gets to show up too oh yeah me too um also mel Looking bomb in the blue shirt that she's wearing in the second picnic. I just want to shout out whoever picked that out. I really... Costume. Nice job. Mel is the MVP of this movie. Yeah. Like, I feel like in the series, I liked her, but I love her in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think she takes a bit to grow on you in the series, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, she does by the end. I loved her in the show, too, but... But I feel like, yeah, in this movie, man, she just... She, like, comes out swinging out the gate. She shines. She shines. She really does. And yeah, she also has a great line. Like, you never had a crush on a dead girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, haven't we all? Classic. That sounded creepy. <laughs> in media, you guys. In media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but they, you know, everything is kind of wrapping up and Laura realizing that she and Carmilla will make some sort of life together regardless because they love each other. Ugh. Ugh, some serious Benjamin Button shit. Yeah. <laughs> They'll figure but it they're out. They're adorable. They're adorable and that's kind of where we where we end the movie is is them saying how much they still love each other. Ugh, Ugh. my heart. I know. Then we get to the cr- we get to the credits. <laughs> And I just love her. She says, Cream Puffington Post. Yes, I love that. Oh, my God. So Laura is is a freelance journalist now, which we found out in the end. She's a, she's a freelance journalist who specializes in supernatural, basically. Yeah. And in one of the post credits where she's talking about, um, she's talking about different events. The president is a lizard creature with very small hands. With very small hands. I did not notice that the first time, my first time watching the movie. Yeah. The kind of, like, not so subtle shout out. It's so like, incredible I, I Trump joke, that. ladies. Incredible. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Snaps. Snaps. Yes. <laughs> One more thing in the credits. The pictures. Yeah, I know. There are pictures and of Carmilla pictures- and Laura with a baby. With a baby. Which they don't really explain at all. No, they don't at all. there. One of our Les Essentials viewers also told us that the baby in the credits is Melanie Windle's baby, who's one of the producers on the film. So I don't know if the baby is a setup or something, but we also get this post credit scene. I feel like they left themselves a lot of room to, like, continue doing Carmilla things, you know? Yes, which so they we have should. all these photos in the credits, and then there's this post credit scene that's back at their apartment. And shout out to Carmilla's Ouija nightshirt. That's all. Yes. Oh, my God. I love that shirt. Mm. If anyone knows where you can buy that, um, send us that. Yes. Because I want it. Yes. And what I love about the post credit scene, too, is they do this, like, huge fake out where she, like, goes to the fridge. You get the side shot where she's opening the fridge door, you know, and there's the, the creepy music. We're climbing, 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 climbing. And then she closes the fridge door and there's nothing, you know? So yes. they, like, totally fake you out with, like, someone's gonna be behind the door. No, they're not. Mm-hmm. And then she turns around and uh, and Maddie walks out yes. from the other side of the fridge which, like, I love this. It's like the last five minutes of this movie, all of a sudden you get all these other people showing up from the web series that we haven't seen in the movie. Yes, which I love. And yeah. isn't she dead? <laughs> she was dead, but then she was dead was like a, a vessel or like a communication vessel for like some uh, underworld. Oh, yes, I remember. Person or something, right? In the last season of the show. Now she's back. It's fine. So now, yeah, then they don't really explain, you know, what is Maddie's deal now, but she's there to let Carmilla know that the giant fish god had an alarming number of eggs, which I think means that we better go back to Styria, but that might have to wait for whatever comes next. Yes. And that's it. That's it. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. That's a movie, you guys. Ugh. They made a movie. What a wonderful series. It really is. It's just, yeah. One of the few things that is just a bunch of queer people and no qualifiers for it. Just this is life. Yeah. And of course we're all queer. Great. Right. Which I love. Which is so much more accurate, right? I mean, we've talked about this before. You don't, we don't usually just 
have, you know, like, the one gay person in your group of friends. Like, we travel in packs like this. Yes. <laughs> where everyone just seems to be kind of queer we in really one way or do. another. We really do. Of course, every Les Essentials comes with a drinking game. So here are the drinking game rules for Carmilla. Be brave, you guys. Be brave. I love to, when we were at Klexicon, a few people came up to us and said they're actually doing the drinking games. We love hearing that. Yes. Oh, my God. Or if you do, if you watch them and do them, people will tweet at us, like live tweet as they do the viewings of whatever Les Essentials they're watching with the drinking game rules. We, just, yeah, it's fun. It's fun for us, you oh guys. Oh, my God. It's so fun. So please keep doing it and please keep living through them. <laughs> but here are the rules. Number one, anytime Carmilla calls Laura something edible. Hey, cream puff. Yep. Anytime L pops up out of nowhere. Mm. <laughs> anytime Carmilla vamps out, which we know is a few yep. times. Anytime they have horror movie references, which is really interesting. They have a bunch of like Nightmare on Elm Street and... That's the only one I can remember right now, but they have a bunch of horror movie references. Yeah. Well, or even the thing with the fridge door that we were just saying. I think that counts. Yes. Callbacks to the classic horror movie genre. Drink. Anytime laugh and Perry bicker. <laughs> oh, yeah. a fairy. Anytime Kirsch is eating. So basically anytime Kirsch is on, on screen. screen. Yeah. Every time Laura says the word plan or plans, which will get you real wasted. <laughs> Save that one. Yeah. And also another one destined to really hurt you every time there is a dream sequence. That's like 50% of the movie, Ellie. I think you're, I think you're trying to kill people now. <sighs> yeah. You can find our drinking game rules on our website at leshangoutpod.com. The other thing you'll be able to find is our Q&A question. <gasps> Q&A. Are you ready? Are you ready for our Carmilla Q&A, Ellie? Yes, I am, Lee. Okay. Let's do it. Ready? Yes. Q, 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 and, 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 and. Number one, which is, it's going to be an attack, so just be All ready. Right, I'm ready. Uh, what is your top ship of the movie? Mm. Is it Carm and Laura, Carm and Elle, mm -hmm. Laugh and Perry, mm -hmm. or Mel and Charlotte? Oh, God. I know. I'm sorry. I mean, I know this is blasphemous. I love Elle so much. Can I say <laughs> me and Elle? <laughs> is it weird to be with someone with my same name okay uh it's not one of my choices my real answer is mel and charlotte i think they're the mvps okay. of this movie i think so too charmel charmel i'm in charmel for the win okay question two five second rule real thing yes no honestly i know that's probably gross for me to say but yeah <laughs> that's fair yeah that's fair i'm not wasting that food why not okay question three what would you do with a vampire trust fund? Would you go uh, travel the French Riviera? Would you invest it? Buy an Austrian schloss? Or, like all good millennials, pay off your student loans? Oh, God. Yeah, I definitely have to pay off my student loans. Ugh, <laughs> that stinks. I want a schloss. Uh, maybe you can make a five-year plan, too, at the same time. Mm, maybe I'll invest and then... After that, I'll pay off my loans. Okay. Yeah. Good Good choice. Okay, question four. And this is, a, this is like a personal attack for you, Ellie, specifically. Oh, so you're welcome for this. All right, here we go. Okay. Dom with her British accent or Dom with Waverly's accent? Okay. <laughs> you're right. Unfair, but British gets me. Yeah. Yeah. The natural, the natural yeah, Brit accent. It. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm curious to see how that one comes comes back online. Yeah, that so. one's going to be big. Let us know, you guys, because I think that's that's going to be a tough one. Question five. What is the best weapon? Is it knowledge, Krav Maga, or weapons? Krav Maga. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are the weapon. I am the weapon. <laughs> we should take some Krav Maga We together. really should. Maybe when I'm less pregnant and full of baby yeah that'd be that. great and we're okay. in the same place yeah right someday so never <laughs> so like Texcon next year <laughs> oh my god that'd be amazing okay question six last question are you ready mm -hmm. uh what is sexier chokers or corsets Oof, cho oh sorry wait i just got real flustered <laughs> I also was about to say choking. That's so bad. That is not that is not Sorry. one of the choices. Um, but if if we need to get like a little more, you know, real talk right now, Ellie, we could do that for yeah, you. Yeah, we're not. No, we're not going to go there. But 
<laughs> okay, my answer for that one is corsets, because oof. Okay. Yeah. Hard to get into, faster to get out of, but totally worth it. So worth it. That's our Q&A, you guys. Uh, and remember, we want to hear your answers. Those questions are going to be up on our Twitter, at Les Hangout Pod, so you can, you can chime in as well. And you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Les Hangout Pod. Or you can email us at leshangoutpod at gmail.com. Let us know where we can buy that Ouija shirt. I want it. Yes. Or you can check out our website at leshangoutpod.com. If you want to help support the podcast, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Uh, the first of which is so easy and totally free. Uh, we have paid listens on Radio Public, so if you listen to us there... All you have to do is listen to the podcast the way you already are, but we will make money from it. Yay. So to do that, you can find us at bit.ly slash leslisten. And if you want to support us with your vampire trust fund, you can donate to our Patreon at patreon.com slash leshangout. You can join us for our Les Essentials viewing parties, and you get a lot of other cool perks on there. So like you get downloads of our Les Essentials songs, which another one is coming right up. <gasps> Yes, I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, we also have merch, so if you want to get some Let's Hang Out merch, you can check out our store at bit.ly slash lesshop. Uh, we still have our Release the Kiss shirts are up, so if you want to help support that campaign, you can do that, and we will be donating 20% of proceeds from those sales to LGBT fans deserve better. Yes. And if you want to follow us individually, you can follow me at Ellie Brigida on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me on Twitter at LSH Foster. And like we said at the beginning of the episode, we have an original song titled In My Dreams that we're excited to share with you. So be sure to stick around after sign off to listen. And with that, I'm Ellie. And I'm Lee. And, and let's, let's hang, hang out, out again, again soon. Let's hang out. out, out. In my nightmares I return As my cheeks begin to burn Staring at me with disgust And nothing left to be discussed She leaves me broken Heart ripped open Knowing that I'll never be What she wanted from me In my dreams I see her Like she was before Knowing I should fear her But wanting more Her soul is broken But I can open my own I see This guilt I can't escape She hides but I know better These sins I haven't paid Were meant to be together In, In my, my dreams, dreams I, I return As she was begin to burn Staring as she feels And nothing left to can give you light to help you find your way there's nothing out there we can't fight no woman left behind i'd give my life to save you cause in my dream i see our few in my dream it's always you in my dream
juicy sizzling steak, hand-tossed original dough, a four-cheese blend, and Papa John's creamy signature Philly sauce. It's like the best cheesesteak sandwich ever, but way better, because it's on a pizza, which means you can share it. So show some brotherly or whateverly love and get yourself one today. Right now at Papa John's, get a large Philly or any large specialty Papa John's pizza for just 12 bucks. Yes, 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. At participating U.S. stores, prices may vary. Taxes, tip, and fee extra.